Hey there, people of the internet! My name is Savannah, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm drawing a D&D character because it's been a while since I've done any D&D thing. Comic page number three probably would have been quicker slash easier, but I wanted to do a nice detailed portrait of one of Victor's characters. And if you like this style of character portrait and want me to do one of your characters, you can contact me through my email, which is in the description, for a commission. Anyway, let's just get into the drawing. So this is Vinthara, Victor's character that he is playing in a campaign that I am running. We have three other players, and I was going to draw all of them in one big scene, but decided to make them into individual portraits so that I could showcase each character's signature items, weapons, or magical abilities. So I had to do some cutting around in the sketch face as to not spoil the other characters' designs. As you all know, I love D&D so much as both a player and a dungeon master or game master. I love writing and telling stories, and having my friends be part of those stories is just so much fun. Kind of on a side tangent that is still related, but some of you may remember my Jesta video, where I talked a little bit about this fantasy world that I've been building and writing since I was like 10. Well, that world is the setting for this campaign. I know that video was forever ago, and I really didn't talk too much about the world, so I'm gonna go over that a little bit more in detail with these character videos. So yeah, this is Vinthara, the Blood Cleric. He is a half-elven race called Ibrius from the tropical desert continent of Lucraso. He worships Leonoke, one of the five makers of the world of Aomura. His companions, who you will see in later videos, are Noel Brightwing, an Aulin Druid of the Stars, Oramis Nigella Damasena, a fairy wizard who specializes in onomancy, which is the power of names, and 33, a half-orc barbarian who just got a direwolf as a pet. I will go into more detail about their characters in their own videos, but right now it's about Vinthara and a bit of lore dump, so you guys have some context as to what the heck I'm talking about. The name of the world, Aomura, means Land of the Makers, or Maker's Land. Eo meaning Maker, which refers to these five creators, or gods, and Mura meaning Land or Realm. Aomura is split into four layers. There is Aomura, the mortal realm where everyone lives, and then above the sky is Nylenathir, the spirit realm, which is where living beings pass on to when they die. Nylenathir also makes up the stars in the sky. Just above or beyond Nylenathir is Aomir, the realm of the makers. It means maker's rest, and is kind of a protective outer shell of the entire world. See, I kind of see Aomura as a weird egg drifting through space. Aomir is the shell, Nylenathir is the goo, and Aomura, the mortal realm, is the yolk. It's like its own dimension outside of our reality, but I won't get into what that means just yet. Now, the fourth layer is technically inside the yolk, and is simply called the void. It is a dead realm of nothingness. The Void is also the main antagonistic force of the campaign so far, but I'll get to that. To understand the Void, I have to talk a little bit more about the Makers. Which again is pertinent information to Vinthara because he is a cleric, so you need to understand who his god is to understand what kind of cleric he is. It's, it's all important. <laughs> the Eo, the Makers, the creators of everything. They began as one being, a being of pure magic with no form or purpose, endlessly drifting through space. They do not know how they came to be, if they were created, or exactly how they became sentient. Over countless years, cycles, or whatever measure of time you wish to use, this formless ball of magical energy began to think, and feel, and want. Eventually, it began to split itself again and again, until it was now five individuals. These beings made forms and created everything. Ninosk was the first to create, and she made the lands, seas, skies, and all elements in between. Leonoke, known as the father of magic, imbued the land with his very energy to give it life. Elthea then wanted to create beings much like the five of them, and made the first creatures to roam the new world, the dragons. Then Gidesis, known as the god of war and civilization, worked with Leonoke to create the giants, who lived alongside the dragons for a time. The final maker is Ezekiel, and he didn't want to create anything. He didn't understand his siblings desire to make living things. This divide in views caused the other makers to exile him to the Void. The Void was the only thing Ezekiel actually created, though it is a paradox of sorts. It is a realm of nothing where no life can live, yet he was trapped there. Other souls throughout the millennia of Aomura also became trapped there, and no one really knows anything about the Void other than the belief that it is evil, the antithesis of life and creation. As I said, Vinthara is a cleric from a religious group called the Sons of Leonoke. They are all men, mostly based in Lucraso, here's the map, and they devote their lives to Leonoke's teachings of peace, balance, life, and magic. 
They are healers and protectors, and some even travel to other lands on spiritual pilgrimages. And that is how we meet Finthara. He always had a different relationship with Leonoke than most other clerics, and was given strange blood magic instead of the holy or arcane that everyone else seemed to possess. Clerics of Leonoke claim to be able to speak with the god of magic himself, either in dreams or visions, or even just telepathically. But Finthara was never able to connect in that way. He was raised in one of the sun's monasteries, and learned everything everyone else did, but his connection just came differently. Leonoke would only send him visions in his dreams, and never spoke to Vinthara directly. But regardless, he stayed loyal to a fault. Before the start of the campaign, rumors began to spread throughout the lands that the Void was rising into the mortal realm and causing chaos. Vinthara had a vision, a sign from Leonoke that he must go stop the Void and stop its spread of corruption. So he went to the land of Kerleon, as his vision instructed, but once he got there, something happened, and the next thing he knew, he woke up in a cave with two strangers. And that's how the campaign starts. Stuff's happening, you're all looking into the rumors of the Void for various reasons, and then you wake up in a cave, deep underground. He met up with his first two companions, Noel and Oramis, and they figured out how to get out of this cave with some help from NPCs, um, after dealing with some really creepy Void creatures and blood magic. 33 didn't come until the second episode, I, I mean session. So to go into the design a little bit, since this was my own fantasy world first that I then made to fit D&D, I had to change the races slash lineages a little bit. So my own original races are just now like the culture groups. So some elves, humans, and half-elves fit into the Ibrius culture, which is like a mix of Egyptian, Mayan, Indian, and Middle East aesthetics. The continent of Lucraso is mostly Ibrius, since it was their birthplace, and the colors of Ibrius culture is red and gold, which just so happened to be Victor's favorite colors. The concept of blood magic is also really interesting for this setting because the enemy, the Void, was made by Ezekiel, who is known as the maker of blood and death. Another reason he was exiled by the other Ao is that he cursed all of their creatures with mortality. So before, all the people and dragons and giants were immortal, to be able to live with their creators forever, but Ezekiel made it to where they can now age and die, which was kind of a dick move, honestly. So Vinthara is obsessed with finding a way to get their immortality back so that he can live up in Eomir with Leonoke forever. But back to blood magic. So it's kind of a taboo and rarely used for good. There are some who use it for healing, but most, but the vast majority of those who practice blood magic are using it for malicious purposes, since it gives the wielder control over others. So when Vinthara got his blood powers from Leonoke, everyone at the monastery was confused and a little scared, but he is one of the most devout followers and only uses his power for the good of others. Except he doesn't heal. He is a battle cleric, with a dope shield and a sword of sharpness. He protects his allies by eliminating his foes as quickly as possible. He is a very capable and charismatic leader and is wise beyond his years when it comes to magic, Leonoke, and doing what's right. But he's not very smart. I just wanted to add this because when Victor rolled his stats, they were all pretty good, but then he got a 6 and he put it into intelligence. Um, it's made for some very fun and interesting roleplay, that is for sure, especially when the wizard has 20 intelligence. Their, their conversations are very fun. Also, each god has their own magical symbols, which I put on Vinthara's tabard. This is the symbol others have made to represent Leonoke as it shows the flow of magic and balance. But Vinthara's amulet, which is his holy symbol, and the design on his shield are modeled after Leonoke's magical rings that float around him, like in this picture that I drew of him, but I didn't record for some reason. The symbol of Leonoke's rings are also very important to my main character of the story, who the group may meet one day. Who knows? It's me. I know. I am the god. So yeah, here he is, the hot Egyptian elf blood cleric. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and my ramblings about my fantasy world. There is much more to come because I have a lot to say. I've been making this for over like 10, 18 years. I don't know how old I am. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. And if you want any commissions of, of your d, d characters that look like this, contact me using my email in the description below. As always, take care and I'll see you in the next one.